Hiya folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Den. Well, I'm on a different uh, river today to what I normally fish. Uh, it's still tidal, um, nice river, haven't fished here very much at all because we couldn't get access for quite a long time, but got access again now and I'm going to try fishing with the pole as you can see from what I've got out here. Uh, I'll show you all the, the rig in detail shortly, but just before I start, and I've only just plumbed the depth, so I know roughly where I'm fishing, which is sort of nine metres or so out. It's a fairly flat bit before it goes down again. Um, tides just changed, so I want to get some bait in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put ten balls of ground bait in, and I'm going to put them, obviously, upstream of the float. I've worked out how fast the flow is and what the depth is, so I've worked out that if I put them around about by the end of my pole tip, by the time I move the pole down, the bait will be where I want it to be, on the bottom. So, let's get that uh, put in, and we'll see if we can just get some fish moving first of all. The balls have got uh, sweet corn and pellets inside them, and as you can see, they're sort of mashed down a little bit. If they were round with this current, they'd probably roll off. Hopefully, this will stop them doing that. So, Right, well, that's the balls of ground bait in, and it's going to take probably three quarters of an hour or so to, uh, to get the fish to come on the feed. They don't come on straight away um, here. So I'm going to have a cup of tea, going to sort my float out, it's not quite sitting right, get everything sorted out exactly how I want it to be, and then once I've got to that point, uh, I'll show you how I'm going to fish today. Okay, it's a few minutes later, I've got most things pretty much sorted out now, just trimmed down. Um, if we talk about the rig, um, Obviously, as I said, I'm fishing with a, about nine meters of pole. And the first thing about this one is I'm using this slick elastic. This is the 20 to 22 grade uh, or size of slick. Never used it before. And uh, I'm actually trying to get a feel for it because I'm gonna be fishing a match at that uh, lake where I um, snapped off on that uh, big fish or snapped the, uh, the top section on the big fish. But I also had a 20 pounder on the day. And I found that the 18 solid wasn't really doing it. Fish in here are generally quite a reasonable size. It's going to be a good test of that. Float wise, I'm using one of these. Some of you may not have seen them before. Sometimes called a lollipop float, or this one's actually a Creluso make of float. Um, I've got a fairly um, thin cane tip insert. It's five grams, and basically it just sits sideways on in the water so you've got less drag. I've got probably eight feet of depth, and I've got eight pound main line on with a six pound bottom. I've got a olivet locked off by shot there and i've got two number fours dropping down i'm actually fishing about that much on the bottom i've got a size 12 hook and i'm going to start off with two uh, bits of sweet corn and then it's just a question of getting it out there to where the ground bait is and just waiting just get the bait on the current's actually moving along quite nicely at the moment it's um Oh, about an hour, an hour and a half since uh, high tide. So the current's going that way, and it will be for most of the day. And where I'm sitting is actually a, effectively a sandbank. So at some point I may have to move the, um, the box further in because I'll be sitting high and dry. It's gone down a bit since I've been here, but basically we're going to put that in. I'm going to hold it in the rest here, and then I'm going to allow it to go down to where the ground bait landed, or where I've calculated it's going to land. And with a bit of luck, you should be seeing that now on the camcorder that's just down below my right leg. Okay, we're going to hold back. Might sort of move it through later on, but for the moment we're just going to sit and hold back and wait for a bite. Start recording. Well, 
I didn't see any kind of bite, but there's something hanging on the bottom. <laughs> this is literally seconds after I spoke to you, and I bet it's probably an eel or something. It doesn't feel like a carp. Or is it? I really don't know what I've got here. Trouble is, I've got a um, puller bung in the top two. Oh, it is a carp. Well, well, <laughs> I don't believe that one. Uh, I tell you, it's going to take a while. I don't see a bite, and then I've got a carp on. Right, let's uh, see how we're going. As I say, I can't ship down to the top two because it's too deep for that. So we're going to have to go with the top three and uh, see what we can do. Right. Well, that was a surprise. And I only knew I'd got it on when I looked at the elastic and it was stretching out a bit. There we go. Well, I can't say that was skill, can I, guys? That's not bad. First one of the day. Not huge, but not bad at all. Okay, well that wasn't a big fish, but it was uh, nice enough and it just goes to show that uh, they're already on the bait. And luckily it seems I got it in the right place. So I'll just allow this to trot back to where it was, which is around about there-ish. And let's see what happens this time. But that was amazing. I, literally, there was no bite, and uh, <laughs> I was just sh shipping in, and there it was. Oh well. GoPro, start recording. Well, we're about three quarters of an hour in now since we put the bait in, and uh, oh. <laughs> I turn around to talk to you and I get a bite. Anyway, what I was saying was, Morris has got one down there, which is where I was uh, trying to go with that. That's uh, taken a fair bit of elastic, look at that. <laughs> I better keep it low. Hopefully this is a good fish. Let's pull him well. Isn't it amazing how you just turn around to talk to the camera and the float goes under and it hasn't really <laughs> moved at all until then. Right, now I'm not going to be able to use the puller bung because it's too deep so we're going to have to go with three sections and do it old school. Actually, just to show you what I mean on that one, if I come down to the puller bung, just to give you the idea, because it's so deep, even if I get the elastic right to the very tip, I'm not actually going to be able to land that properly. I haven't really got any control over it. Let's see if we can get close, but I've got no real control here. I mean, it's fighting right underneath me. It's not actually all that deep down there. But we'll keep going like this just for a moment. And again, I'll get some elastic in. Morris has uh, finally got his in by the look of it. This thing's doing some pulling. Right, there he is out there. It's a decent fish, but control-wise, I suppose I could stand up. That's about the only way I'd be able to, to do this properly, I think. This is what I was saying. You've got too short a piece of pole to be able to get control because of the depth of water.
He was fighting well though, wasn't he? Right. Might be able to do if I stand up. Of course, as soon as I do that, I spook him. Yep, this looks like it could be the plan. Stand up and do it. Even then, I'm sort of not really in control. It's very awkward when you've got a big depth of water like this. Right. This time, fish. I think next time we're just going to go with the top three or four sections and do it old school, but at least he's in. Good fish though. Ooh. Well, that'll do. That will do. Let's get the hook out. We'll weigh him just out of curiosity. If he decides to keep still. Barbless hook, so it just comes straight out. Let's get the scales out and just see. Right, this is my old landing net, which weighs one pound three ounces. So we'll deduct that from the one of the scales. See in a minute. Zero. Getting wet. Nine pounds five ounces, so that makes it eight pounds two ounces. It's not the biggest fish in the world, but it's a very nice, handy fish to start off with. Well, as I say, there's the top two, and the top two, my actual hook is down here, like that, so it really does make it awkward to try and do it with a, a puller. Next time we'll try it on the, the top three and the top four, just to see how we go with that. But I suppose let's get back in there and uh, see if we can get some more. Well, at least they're willing to feed today. We're not long after the floods, so maybe they're just hungry. Anyway, I'm hoping so. I don't very often fish with a pole like this, but I would have an enjoyable day nevertheless. And we're in again. That was almost immediate. So, not very big on this one. I'm going to see if I can just fight this one off the, the top three sections to save me all that aggravation trying to reach the, the puller bung up there. Oh, it's only a smallish one. <laughs> that means it's probably three pounds or so, I'm guessing. Right. So even with this, I'm kind of still going to have to probably stand up. Got him. <laughs> okay. I say he's small, for the river he's small, but he's actually a decent fish. <laughs> and soaking me as usual. Lovely fat fish. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's see where the hook is. Okay. Not very long, but very fat. Nice fish, eh? GoPro, start recording. I think I just had a bit of a knock then, and looking like it. Yep, there we go. He's off. <laughs> Trying to stay out of the way of the um, tripod here. <laughs> Obviously put it in the wrong place today. He's off upstream. Well, 
It is upstream. Oh, we got a load of reeds in there. He's literally right up in the, the bank here to the left and really tall uh, rushes are in there. Whole bank of them. I thought he'd actually got caught up in them at one point, but he was not. I'm actually going to take it off of the fourth section this time just to see if we get a bit more control. I don't do this very often with a, a pole on the, the river, as you probably tell. Uh, that probably gives me a bit more control, but I'm kind of wary now, having broken that tip section the other week. We'll take it easy and see how this goes. It's right underneath me, so I, I can't lay the pole down. So it's got to be up in the air. I'm just going to have to be really careful. It's only been in a couple of minutes again when it uh, went under. Morris just hit his, run, his uh, pole with a lump of ground bait. I think we're going to have to go back down to the top three and see how that works. Feels a bit more comfortable, but probably less control. Really awkward this when you've got your puller up there. I haven't really got enough control at that point. I think the only way to do this today is to go to the top two, get the elastic in like I did last time, and um, stand up to land them. Not the only thing I can think of that gives me any real control. Might just manage to get him in. Yeah. So, seems you can do it with a extra long length of line. And, yeah, well, I'd say he's probably about seven pounds, this one. Again, he's not big enough to really weigh, and I'm obviously sure that you've seen me catch seven pound fish before, so we'll, uh, we'll crack on. Well, I've just looked down below me, and when I started, the water was probably just about below the, the foot plate. Now it's uh, nowhere near the feet, though the feet are buried in the sand here. It's gone down at least a foot, 30 centimetres or more. So what that means is where my bulk shot was off the bottom before, it's probably getting very close to actually laying on the bottom now. So I may need to um, shallow the float up just a little bit. It's something you have to do on tidal rivers just to take account of the different flows and the, the different heights of water. The bites have actually dropped off a bit now. So I'm going to actually change tactics slightly and I'm going to feed again, but with a bait dropper. And I've just put my line through the ring, hook into the cork there. Then I'm going to put some bait in here, close it up. Then when this goes in, it hits the bottom, does that, and the bait comes out. So that means I know exactly where my bait's going to be. And that'll be exactly where I'm going to be fishing. So just get a bit of pellets some corn. Don't overfill these things because the doors don't open if you don't do that, or if you do do that rather. Right, and then the other trick is you put one of these cable ties on your rod. Just an ordinary electrical cable tie and just put it like that. Keep it twisted so the thing doesn't fall off. I need to stand up for this. And if I now put the pole back together, shift out, Wind's getting a bit strong, it's making it a little bit difficult, but we'll live with it. Right, so I know where I want it to be, so I just turn the pole, wait till it goes in. Now it won't actually come open until it hits the bottom, and I want it to hit the bottom there. Right, give it a second or two, and bring it back out. And, oops. Right, here we go. So, as you can see, it's all open and I've just fed that amount of bait in there. So I'm gonna do it again, put another one in. Make sure I've got plenty of bait in there. Get a reasonable amount of feed in this way. It's obviously not 
getting the bulk in like you would with balling it with ground bait, but when you want to be accurate and you're just sort of refeeding like I am here, then I find that this is a good way of doing it. As I say, ship out. Twist half a turn to the right. See where I am. And a bit further along. Bait goes in there. And that's it. That's the second one. So we've got plenty more bait down there now. And we can continue fishing. Alright, so... All I have to do, I can leave that cable tie on there. I just literally take the hook out of the piece of cork here. Undo it. And then I can just put this out of the way somewhere on my side tray. And that's all there is to it. Accurate way of feeding, isn't it? I should also point out that I've uh, changed the hook and gone to a very large piece of bait, which is four or five pieces of sweet corn on a hair rig. And that seems to be what's doing the damage at the moment. I had two pieces on before, but I was thinking with all that bait down there, um, let's get a big bait out so they can see that first before they take all the other stuff. Seems to be working so far. Okay. No, I'm just looking at that now. That uh, bulk shot, the Olivet, is right on the bottom. You can see how much the, the float's sticking out, so I'm going to have to go shallower. And this is what I was saying about fishing tidal rivers with a pole. You do have to keep changing your depths to accommodate. So, basically, at the moment, where this was that far off the bottom before, now it's on the bottom like that. So. Just a question of going, well, let's go 30 centimetres shallower. And just change the depth by pulling up on that one there. Try not to pull from this one, otherwise you'll end up with an issue. Right, so that's maybe a fraction more. Right, we'll go with that. So it should now be that the Olivet is about a foot off the bottom again. And these two dropper shots hold the, the bait down on the bottom. I'll just move that down a bit more. It seems to have moved a bit. Right. I should also point out this little thing here. Uh, the wind's blowing that way and it's been quite a problem. So I've got the tip underwater and this is just a stop against the pole to, uh, to stop it just being pulled around so I can take my hands off. And all it is is just a peg that goes into a series of holes, which if you'd watched my videos on how to make this box, you would have seen me doing that. Okay, just makes it easier for me with the arthritis. Start recording. That'll do it. Oh, he's off. He's off towards Morris. Coming towards you, Morris. Right down next to you. Buy your float. Oh! He's under Morris's pole. He headed for the hills. He's going for those rushes down there. Oh, Morris has finally lifted out. Thank you. I'll just mess Morris's swim for a little bit before. <laughs> oh, still going that way. Whoa! I think this must be a good one. Certainly got that elastic pulling out, isn't it? And as I say, this is the 20 to 22 slick, so it's getting a bit of a workout today, which is what I wanted. Thanks, mate. Oh, he's way out in the middle now, and he look. Well, I can't do anything with him. I'm going to unship at the four section this time, rather than the three section, just so that we can keep the pressure on. 
He's actually down somewhere below me now. Okay, let's see if we can do it on the two sections so I can get the puller on it. It's just awkward today. I never thought I'd be able to do this from the started on the thing, but it seems to have worked for now, so... As I say, just a bit awkward, which we can live with. I haven't seen him yet, he's right down here, but it, it goes off quite deep just there, so... idea how far down here is. I can see bubbles. I'm gonna have to stand up I think. It's so difficult to get control. I can't get much more elastic in and uh, we must be getting close to him being tired out by now. We'll get it ready. fish. I think we're about there now. Oh <laughs> no no no. Come on. He's woken up now I've scared him. Right this time then. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Don't know what he weighs, but he weighs a decent amount. Oh dear. <laughs> We're definitely weighing this one. Let's get him unhooked first of all. Oh, hook's come out in the net, which was handy. I don't want to put the, the bait in just down there because you also get fish right down the edge in this place. Just gonna go straight to a weighing on this. Right. Zero and thirteen pounds twelve ounces. That's twelve pounds nine ounces. You'd think he was bigger, though, wouldn't you? Mind you, it's not the accurate uh, way of doing things when you're weighing it. I'll try and show him to you. There we go. Look, nice fish. See if we can get another one. Well, I can't buy a bite, mate. <laughs> GoPro, start recording. Do you know, I just went to lift in, there was no sign of a bite, and yet this is on the end. <laughs> it's coming your way, Morris. It was hanging on the end, mate. <laughs> I literally, I've been watching it, it didn't move. I thought, I'll try something different. And then I lifted out and guess what? It was just lying there with the bait in its mouth. Oh, I don't know what I've got to do to get it right. <laughs> it's funny how they don't move off with it sometimes, isn't it? Well, I'm here, you're okay, you can carry on again, thanks. Well, I don't know what to say, guys. <laughs> oh, he's okay. Going for those rushes. Come on, out of there.
I'm gonna make sure I've got all my elastic sorted out. I don't think he's big by the standards of the river. He's certainly not pulling anything like the other ones did. Look at that, straight in the net. I must need to feed this guy. <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> it's bigger than you think. That's actually a nice fish. Not huge, but it's very good. Just gets the hook out. Hook's just in the front of his lip. Easy to get out. But uh, yeah, now he wakes up. Anyway, you get the idea, guys. Nice enough fish. At least it went under this time. Taking a fair bit of line, well, line, elastic. Let's see where we are. Look, he's out there, and I can't uh, lift too high. Fairly tentative bites, weren't they? Or nibbles. You can get down to the top three with that. Uh... Oh, I'll leave it for a minute. Yeah, he's decided he didn't want to play. And the elastic's doing its job so far, anyway. That's the main thing. Downstream again. And a fair bit of elastic outlook. Right. Well, hopefully, we've taken most of the steam out of him now. Let's see if we can get a bit of elastic back. right underneath me now look and why he's come right there I have no idea but I've got no control over him at the moment starting to now though right right underneath me literally he's stirring up mud right in the very edge there Getting close, or is he just messing with me? Come on, he's kicking up clouds of sand down there. And I was thinking about fishing a bit closer in just now, but I suspect that this has uh, spooked whatever might have been down there. Yeah, I'm on fish. All right, you can give up now. You aren't that big. Oh, headed with the reeds. Right, come on, fish. <laughs> Trying to beach himself. Look, what are you doing, fish? Come on. Anytime soon, please. Keeps waking up and finding some more energy from somewhere. Right, 
come on. You've had your fun. Yeah. Okay. Oh, got the elastic cord around there. Okay. Oh yeah. Decent fish again, mind you. All the fish in this river are good. You never ever catch really small fish in here. I don't know why. It's like as if there's been no fry for 10 or 15 years or more. Okay. Well, let's see what he weighs. I'm not going to actually weigh him, but he's a really fat fish. Oh, surprisingly, it's actually pregnant as well. You know, a good eight pounds or so, I reckon. Which, for that sort of length, is a surprise. Well, maybe seven, actually. But even so, good fish. Else happening, so I've Go just gone it. out for the last few minutes, back out on the, the nine metre line. But to be honest, um, I can't see me catching anything else. The bites have slowed right down at the moment. Um, had a good day. It wasn't fantastic, but yeah, really enjoyable. And as I always say, that's what it's all about in the end. So, hope you enjoyed it too because that's the end of it and if you did click the button if you want to subscribe you can always do that too and until the next time bye for now